Namaste. And welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to do a recap of the highlights from programming language news in 2020. I'm focusing on industry versus research because that's what I know best, but hopefully we'll get a chance sometime to look into what goes on in programming language research sometime also. And here for some high-level stats, I'm using my tool Languish, which uses statistics from GitHub to measure programming language popularity. By default, using a mean score, we don't see a lot of movement in the top 10, although TypeScript and PHP seem to have switched places versus a year ago, as well as C and Ruby. Note that even within the world of GitHub, the metric you use matters. So for example, if we look at pull requests, Ruby's up to sixth place, or pushes, still at eighth. And what metric really matters most? I don't know. That's why I have the option here to look at various things. And maybe someday I'll still get data from somewhere other than GitHub as well. Looking a little bit further down the popularity rankings, we see that Dart has managed to maintain its newfound popularity following the success of Flutter. We see a little bit of other motion as well. Again, if we change our metric, you'll see different results. For example, stars, Swift is still much higher, although still down from last year. And Rust, for example, has moved up in this metric. So having seen a quick look at popularity, let's move on to individual news items, primarily looking at the most popular languages first. And worth pointing out that even the languages that aren't in the top 10 or top 20 still can have very vibrant communities and do amazing work. ECMAScript 2020 included primarily those proposals that were finished in 2019, including things like global this, option chaining, and nullish coalescing. Things already approved this year include, for example, weak refs and numeric separators. And also in the area of web, although not JavaScript, WebAssembly has continued to make progress, including finishing a number of proposals and continuing work on popular items such as reference types. In the world of Python, we had the release of Python 3.9, which didn't add a lot of dramatic changes to the Python language, although a few simple and nice things. Bigger was the use of a parsing expression grammar to do the parsing of the Python syntax. The idea is that this might allow for more flexibility in the language going forward. And outside of the language itself, the BDFL Emeritus of Python, Guido Van Rossum, using my American English pronunciation, I am Guido Van Rossum, decided to unretire and join Microsoft. Java had two releases, JDK 14, which standardized switch expressions following a similar feature in earlier C-sharp, and JDK 15 standardized text blocks such that Java is now a partially indentation sensitive language, and continued to explore things like data records. Go had a couple of releases, including standardizing Go modules, though perhaps more exciting was the preview demo of a possible implementation for generics. Whether you're a fan or not, if this actually does ever come out, it'll be harder to say lol no generics on Reddit about Go. And a very big news item was C++20. Big because it included a large number of new features, including coroutines, modules, concepts, ranges, and more. And somewhat related to C++ because of the Clang compiler, we also had a renewed emphasis in LLVM on compilation speed, focusing on optimized builds. We've had possibly 10% to 20% improvements in compilation speed, again, for optimization builds. The debug builds haven't changed a whole lot, but hopefully we're already faster in the first place. TypeScript had a number of releases as always, including support for ECMAScript private fields, which are only at stage three in the ECMAScript standards process, as well as improvements to type inference and variadic tuple types with labeled tuple elements that came out with TypeScript 4.0. TypeScript 4.1 introduced other interesting new features, such as template literals, which build on the previous idea of string literal types. PHP also had a huge release this year with PHP 8, including named arguments, union types, and match expressions, which follows the same feature already having been added to Java and C Sharp, as many of these imperative languages become gradually more functional. PHP 8 also included two JIT engines. In other huge news, .NET 5 came out this year, which is the coalescing of the .NET implementation into .NET Core. And along with it, they released C Sharp 9 and F Sharp 5, where C Sharp 9 included, for example, the new data records feature. C, on the other hand, did not see as many changes, which is somewhat expected, though there might be a new standard voted on in 2021. In other big news, Ruby 3.0 came out, where one of the goals had been for Ruby 3.0 to be three times faster than 2.0. 
and at least on some benchmarks under the JIT, they've achieved that. They also have improvements to concurrency and have also included some static typing support. Dart also saw some releases, including work on null safety, for which they released the beta toward the end of the year, which continues the trend of many languages toward null safety of one sort or another in their language. Swift also had some releases, including improvements to main functions for program entry points. Although perhaps the bigger news is that they've started releasing Swift for Windows. In Scala news, they're looking at trying to finish version 3 soon. Rust has also had a number of releases, including better error tracking, improved function-like procedural macros, constfn improvements, which is sort of like constexpr in C++, and the first tier 1 support for a non-x86 platform. Perhaps somewhat more interesting for Rust, though, beyond that, was the layoffs at Mozilla, which impacted paid development for the Rust programming language. Shortly after this happened, there was an announcement for an upcoming Rust Foundation. And Amazon has also announced sponsorship of the Rust project, including the hiring of developer Nico Matsakis. Kotlin continued to see some improvements as well, including continued development on Kotlin Native. And another huge announcement for the year was Perl 7. After decades of Perl 6, later rebranded Raku, we're going to continue to develop Perl itself going forward as well, skipping version 6 because that became a different language. Also in the area of Camel mascots, OCaml has continued to work on their multi-core support. Elixir has also had a couple of releases, including improving the application bundling and integration with Erlang. And in the Erlang area, perhaps the most interesting thing is that they're working on a JIT for the Beam virtual machine, which will improve Erlang and anything else in the Erlang Beam OTP community. Racket has also been improving their underpinnings by re-implementing a lot of their core on Shea Scheme. The idea is this might simplify a lot of their core, removing the amount of C code they're using, as well as possibly improving runtime performance eventually. Julia 1.5 was released this year as well, including various improvements to multi-threading and memory handling, as well as adding a feature I'm a big fan of, which is implicit values for named arguments. Hacks 4.1 came out, including tail call optimization and more. NIM 1.4 came out, including a cyclical collector for the reference counting system, called ORC rather than ARC. This year, ZIG has made a lot of momentum, including interesting things like the ZIG CC drop-in for cross-compilation of C and C++ built into the ZIG compiler release. They also launched a ZIG Software Foundation. BuckleScript, aka ReasonML, has some interesting news in rebranding their product to Rescript with a new logo. They've also been working on some new syntax for the language. Futhark, a functional language focused on high-speed parallel execution, had an interesting language change where they changed all sizes to be 64-bit integers. And then perhaps not so much in the news as the looking forward area, some other smaller languages that I'm interested in keeping an eye on are Gleam, which is a functional statically typed language for the Erlang slash Beam virtual machine. And Enzo is another language that's interesting to me. This was formerly called Luna. They've been rebuilding it from the ground up pretty much. It's a functional language with both textual and visual representation. In other visual language news, I found it interesting that Unity acquired Bolt Visual Scripting and it's going to be including that by default in the Unity game engine. I might possibly cover this some during the upcoming year. And also in the game engine area, though back to open source, they've redone GD script for Godot 4.0, including at this point using static typing information to execute more optimized code, which personally I think is likely to be very useful for games. And closing out 2020, of course, as we know, the Flash player did reach end of life. Poor action script, though it did seem to get a bit of an uptick right at the end of the year probably as people noticing, the poor Flash player's passing. Of course, there might still be a future for it. So anyway, that's my news for 2020, and a little bit of looking forward to 2021. I missed lots of good news still here, of course, so feel free to add that in the comments. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Peri betangla.